Hello and welcome to Retail Management BUS 302. We are in our week seven lecture four video. And this week we're talking about merchandise management. And we just finished the last video where we we're talking about brands and store brands and some alternatives there. And this is the last video for the for week seven. And in this video, we're going to start off and we're going to talk about how to negotiate with vendors. Now, one of the most important things about doing about negotiating is having the knowledge, right? So your buyer need as a buyer, if you're going in to buy, you know, negotiate and buy merchandise from a vendor, you need to know what your your needs are. You also need to know what the vendor can and cannot do and what the trends in the market are, right? So you need to know some of those things. You also are going to want to know what the opportunity is for any markdown money for un unpopular merchandise or anything that's not selling through. So having this information when you go talk to vendors is really important. Um, some of the negotiation issues that you're going to want to talk about is going to be things like uh, the price and the gross margin. You know, So as you're looking at that uh, price and gross margin, sometimes... Uh, especially the national brands, they will charge you slotting. You might have a slotting fee or give an allowance, right? So as a store, you might charge a vendor or they might request a certain amount of space. So that might be something uh, you might want to look for exclusive products. Maybe there's an opportunity to do some cooperative advertising where they can help support your ad budgets. Who's going to pay for transportation? There's lots of these things that are going to be added in that you're going to have to think about. So this is not something you just want to start doing one day, like, hey, I want to be a buyer, and then you go do it. This is something there's a lot of development time. You have to learn and go through the process. And, and generally, you know, you're trained in. Some things that you would want to think about um, when you are, are negotiating is, you know, if you show up as a single negotiator and the, and the vendor has five people, right, you, you're going to just get, they're going to take advantage of you because there's no way one person can think through everything that all five are saying. So you might want to have as many negotiators as the vendor. Also find a place that is neutral to negotiate. You don't want to go to their headquarters. You don't want them at your headquarters. Or find a neutral place where neither person has some, um, you know, kind of that home off home field advantage. Uh, one of that's one of the things about Walmart is they have people go to Bentonville, Arkansas. There's just nothing in Bentonville, Arkansas, so they always have an opportunity for they, they, that's their home field advantage, right? Um, and and then you also have to realize that if there are issues, it's not anybody's fault, right? It's not it, you know no one is intentionally trying to hurt one company or the other. So keep it. We keep everything about the issues, about problems. Don't focus on people. Focus on problems. Work on ways to uh, to both, you know, for both sides to really gain. Let let the other people do some talking and let, find out uh, how far they're going to really go. Probably the most important thing is never burn bit bridges, right? Don't insult anybody because you never know when you're going to have to go back to them, right? So in, in long term, what you want to do is find ways to develop strategic relationships or a partner relationship. This is where as a retailer, as a retailer and a vendor, you're both committed to helping each other over the long term and both investing in each other in ways that are mutually beneficial. These are win-win relationships, um, you know, where both sides win and those are awesome, right? So, and because then you realize that you're, it's kind of like that marriage where you're in it for better or worse, richer or poorer, that kind of thing. Uh, so if you can find a couple vendors to really work with and stick through thick and thin, that might be uh, really a benefit, something that you would, if you, if you can do it, you should do it as a retail uh, buyer. Right now to build these partnering relationships, you do need to be aware of what the other side needs. You need to explore, you need to commit, right? Um, if you do have them, you know, continually working on that trust relationship, have open communication, make sure all of your uh, commitments are credible and they can be supported, right? So you definitely wanna do those things long-term. And so definitely build those relationships if you can. The final topic that we want to really look at with the, with merchandise management is some of the ethical, legal, social responsibility issues. And one of the biggest issues that you can probably run into is just counterfeit merchandise. 
right? Or merchandise that violates trademark or copyright or is an infringement on, cop on any intellectual property types things. So you do need to be aware of that as you're negotiating, make sure that you don't aren't running into counterfeit merchandise, that you actually have the real thing. This is an issue, a big issue when you're talking about pharmaceuticals and developing nations, uh, because you don't always know what drug is in the drug, right? So, because there's their standards are very different than our standards here in the United States. So depending on where you are, you want to make sure that you have the right product, not counterfeit. Um, also be aware of, you know, any gray market or black market merchandise, right? So things that have been diverted from uh, or stolen. Uh, this is one of the big issues with porch pirates, you know, stealing products from people's um, porches, and then they turn around and they sell it in their own market. So you, these are things that you have to be aware of. You're not going to get like major, right? As a buyer, you're not going to be buying 10, you know, lots of that stuff. But if you're running a thrift store or something like that, you might run into some of those areas, some of those things. Um, you know, again, be aware of any buybacks or um, exclusive dealing agreements, any time contracts, uh, anything that might be considered anti-competitive because that could get you into trouble uh, with the federal government. So you need to be very careful on that. And then bribery, making sure that you don't bribe. This is a huge area, especially if you're dealing internationally. You think there's no way I'm going to bribe. But if you have if somebody asks you to pay you know, a certain fee or anything, and they, you know, it's to an individual, that could be a bribe. And, and well, they say in some countries, it's just common. You know what, it is an area that can, it is illegal, and it can get you into a lot, a lot of trouble. So you do need to be aware of those things. And finally, with uh, the social responsibility, right? Remember that as a company, a retail company, being socially responsible, this is something that you, the company chooses to do voluntarily, right? These are things that their a company is trying to do to support any ethical or social environmental things, right? So giving to charity, uh, fair trade agreement, you know, buying fair trade or any green products, right? Supporting groups. The, these are really important things that you would want to highlight in your buying process and in your merchandise as well. Make sure that that is noted in your merchandise areas. So with that, that brings us to the end of week seven, and it brings us to the end of the merchandise uh, management topic. And next week and week eight, we are going to be talking about retail management just in general. We're going to talk about some of the odds and ends uh, related to being a store manager and some of the things that we just haven't been able to cover as we looked at all the other topics these last seven weeks. So with that, have a great week and we'll see you in the course home.